good morning children welcome in the sst class of 6th standard take out your book of history and civics open the lesson number 1 of civics the name of the lesson is rural local self government and the page number is 105 first of all students just have a look on the topics which we will have to read in this chapter the topics are rural local government gram panchayat gram sabha its composition and functions gram panchayat composition functions and sources of income link between a gram sabha and a gram panchayat difference between a gram sabha and a gram panchayat nyay panchayat panchayat samiti composition and functions and the last is jila parishad composition functions and source of income now students i would like to discuss the objectives of the lesson with you the objectives are at the end of the lesson you will be able to describe the rural local self government explain the features and functions of local government at the village level block level and the district level appreciate the role played by the local bodies and initiate responsibilities to help local bodies now i am showing you the topics which we will have to read in the today's class and the topics are first of all we have to introduce our topic then we will read, read the rural local government then gram panchayat and then a sub part of gram panchayat that is a gram sabha its composition and functions now students just have a look on the objectives of the today's topics children at the end of the today's class you will be able to know the panchayati raj system role of gram sabha the composition and functions of the gram sabha so students before starting the reading of the chapter i would like to discuss its important terms related to the today's topics so first term is the panchayati raj system panchayati raj system is a process through which people in the rural areas participated in their own government the next term is panchayat panchayat means a group of 5 people the next term is customary customary means according to the customs next is gram sabha the gram sabha is an assembly of all adults who live in the area covered by a panchayat the next one is expenditure expenditure means an amount of money spent and the last one is voluntary voluntary means acting on once on free will so students these are some of the important terms which are related to the today's topics only okay students now let's start the reading of the chapter india is a vast country it has 28 states and 7 union territories children first of all cut down the 29 and 7 because there are no more 29 states there are only 28 states and there are 7 union territories which are added by two more union territories that are the jammu and kashmir and the ladakh these are the two new more union territories so there are 28 states and 9 union territories okay students let's start reading further it has a population of about 1.25 billion people it is also a country of immense diversities people of india speak different languages and follow different customs and religions so students this is the meaning of diversities if diversities means where the people speak different languages and follow different customs and religions different regions have their specific needs and problems it would be very difficult to solve all these different problems sitting at the center so to work more efficiently over government functions at three levels union state and the local level decentralization of political and economic powers is the central theme of the panchayati raj the numbers of the villages is more than 6 lakh so students this is very difficult to run such a large country with a single government so over government functions at the three levels union union means sitting at the center level state that means every state has its own state government and the local level 
Decentralization of political and economic power is the central theme of the Panchayati Raj. The number of villages is more than 6 lakh. Here the decentralization means, beta, decentralization means divisions of the political and economic powers to the Panchayati Raj or the local powers. And the number of the villages is more than 6 lakh. The percentage of rural population is 68.85 according to the census 2011. Now children, we are going to read about the three levels of the government. First of all, union government. The union or the central government of India deals with matters of national importance such as defense, foreign affairs, national finance, railways, postal services etc okay students do you understand the meaning of the union government union government the meaning of the union government is the central government of india which deals with the methods of national importance such as defense foreign affairs national finance railways postal services etc the next one is state government State government looks after the issues at the state level like maintaining law and order, providing education, transport, health services etc. in the state. And the last one is local self-government. Local self-government deals with local problems or needs. The local people elect their own representatives to form a local government of the area in which they live. Students, here the representative means the members elected by the people so local government is the elected representatives by the local people the local government is of two types rural local self-government and urban local self-government so students in this chapter we will study about only the rural local self-government rural local government or the panchayati raj system the local government at the rural level functions under the Panchayati Raj system. This is a process through which people in the rural areas participate in their own government. So students, this is the definition of the Panchayati Raj system. The basic idea of the Panchayati Raj system is to provide more and more space for people to participate and raise their voices in areas of their concern. Okay students, let's read the next paragraph and try to understand the paragraph with the help of this image. The Panchayati Raj system is a three-tiered system which includes the Gram Panchayat at the village level, the Janpad Panchayat or the Panchayat Samiti at the block level and the District Panchayat or the Jila Parishat at the district level. So students, these three are the three-tiered system of the Panchayati Raj system. Okay students, now turn out your page. On the page number 106, you can see a chart. With the help of this chart, you can understand the full topic. This chart shows that the Panchayati Raj system is based on the three-tiered system. The number one is Gram Panchayat, second is Panchayat Samiti and the third one is Jila Parishad. The Gram Panchayat is at the village level, Panchayat Samiti is at the block level and the Jila Parishad is at the district level. Students, here the Gram Panchayat is also divided into another three parts. The number one part is Gram Sabha, second is Gram Panchayat and the third is Nyay Panchayat. So students, today we will read only the first tire system of the Panchayati Raj that is the Gram Panchayat. Let's start reading Gram Panchayat or the Panchayat. The Panchayat system is very old in India. The word Panchayat means a group of five people. It was customary that the villagers elect a group of five elders as Panchas. They used to deal with local problems and resolve disputes. So students, the word Panchayat means a group of five people. And it was a custom that the old tradition that the villagers elect a group of five, five elders, which means Panchas. They used to deal with local problems and resolve disputes. Disputes means fights among villagers. Their decisions were binding upon all the villagers, but this system became less effective during during the British rule because the British sent their own officials to look after rural problems. So students, why the Panchayati Raj system became less effective during the British rule? Because the British sent their own officials to look after rural problems. 
After independence, this system again gained importance, especially in 1992. The central government formulated rules for the Panchayati Raj system that became effective from April 1993. So students, here the term formulated means to make when the central government making the rules for the Panchayati Raj system and it has became effective from April 1993. The Panchayati Raj system at village level consists of three main bodies. It means Panchayati Raj system at village level again further divided into three parts that is Gram Sabha, Gram Panchayat and the Nyay Panchayat. Now students, let's read the Gram Sabha. How to compose the Gram Sabha? The Gram Sabha is an assembly of all adults who live in the area covered by a panchayat. So students, this is the definition of Gram Sabha. A panchayat may include one village or a few villages. Every citizen who is 18 years of age or above, that is, whose name is in the voter list, is a member of the Gram Sabha. So children, who are the members of the Gram Sabha? Every citizen who is 18 years of age or above and whose name is in the voter list is a member of the Gram Sabha. The Gram Sabha holds meetings where people directly participate and seek answers from their elected representatives. The meetings are held at least twice a year. Okay students, now let's go through the functions of the Gram Sabha. The Gram Sabha has the following important functions. Number one, it elects the representatives who form the Gram Panchayat. These representatives look after the day-to-day -day working of the Panchayat. Okay students, what is the first task of the Gram Sabha? Gram Sabha elects the members of the Gram Panchayat whose representatives look after the day-to-day -day working of the Panchayat. Number two, it also elects the Sarpanch or the head of the Gram Panchayat or the village headman or the Mukhiya. He or she presides over the meetings of the Gram Sabha. So students, Gram Sabha also elects the Sarpanch or the Mukhiya of the Gram Panchayat whose duty is to presides over the meeting of the Gram Sabha. Now students, let's start the reading of the third important function of the Gram Sabha. It discusses important matters and problems regarding the village. It is the platform where all plans regarding the work of the Gram Panchayat are placed before the people. So children, Gram Sabha discuss all the important matters related with the people of that village and Gram Panchayat cannot implement any plan before discuss it with the Gram Sabha. Now number 4. It is an important factor in making the Gram Panchayat play its role and be responsible to the persons who elected its members. So children, Gram Sabha forces the Gram Panchayat to play its role honestly and be responsible to the persons who elected the members of the Gram Panchayat. Number 5 of the functions of the Gram Sabha It passes the annual budget of the Panchayat. It reviews the work and the accounts of expenditure and income of the Gram Panchayat. So children, the meaning of this point is Gram Sabha passes the annual budget of the Gram Panchayat and check the amount to be spent and the income of the Gram Panchayat. Now let's read the sixth function of the Gram Sabha. It prevents the Panchayat from doing wrong things such as misuse of money, corruption, favoring certain people etc. So children, here the word prevents means to stop. So children, it means Gram Sabha stops the Panchayat from doing wrong work like misuse of money, corruption, favoring some people like biasness, etc. Point 7 of the functions of the Gram Sabha. The Gram Sabha can pass a vote of no confidence against any member of the Gram Panchayat if it is dissatisfied with the work of that member. As a result, the Panchayat member will have to resign. A new member will be elected in his or her place. So children, meaning of this point is, the Gram Sabha can dismiss any member of the Panchayat if it is not satisfied with his or her work and a new member will be elected in his or her place by the Gram Sabha. And now let's read the 8th function of the Gram Sabha. 
it maintains and promotes social harmony it involves voluntary workers in different social programs all members should attend the meetings of the gram sabha in this way they can raise their problems find solutions and participate in the local democratic government so children here the word harmony means kindness many people of the gram sabha willingly do different social programs and it is compulsory for all the members of the gram sabha to attend the meetings so they can raise their problems and find out the solutions so students over today's class is over we will read the further topics in the next class i hope you all understood the topic and now your homework is to read today's topic again and revise the important terms which i showed you in this video